Tom, like it. The drama that these fellas talk about, they wouldn't even be there if they just listened to you, man. I listened to your show a few times. I'm not from here, but you're pretty dead on in how women are. Get in, get off, get out. That's my motto. Don't be stuck with one girl too long because it's nothing but headaches and problems. I finish a household job when she can finish an intellectual conversation with me. I completely agree with the guy who you just spoke with. Oh, you're an idiot, too. No, I'm a human being. Oh, a human being. I see. Hi, Tom. I love you. As well you should, darling. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay, so what are we talking about? I don't know. I'll tell you what. Buy a radio. Call me back. Let's say hello to Angelina on the Tom Likas show. I don't believe in defending a girl's honor. She's just going to, you know, try and use it, manipulate the situation, you know. To yeah, which, by the way, if a chick is is getting boned by me, she has no honor anyway. There's nothing to defend. <laughs> that went out the window a long time ago with her undies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My husband listens to your radio station. Every time he comes home after listening to your radio station, he's like in a bad mood really? all the time. Uh, he, he must enjoy it. He listens all the time. I don't know. He, I, I don't know what it is. You're just brainwashing him somehow, and I don't mm. like that. Give me a list of the other countries you've traveled to. I've traveled to San Francisco. I've traveled to oh, Las San Francisco. Vegas. What country is that? What? I said what other countries have you traveled to, and Canada and Mexico don't count. Oh, Texas. 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 My I'm favorite country. Austin. Now, listen to How about you answer the question I'm asking? I, what other countries have you been to besides Canada and Mexico and the United States? Well, not yet, but we will. What other countries are on the list? Um, what would that I would like to go to? Yeah. I'd like to go to New York. New York, that's a great country. Rather than having just one, I've got a whole roster. Why do you need a whole It's roster? like the taxi squad. And they're called the taxi squad because when I'm done banging them, I give them money for a taxi. Guys don't need to be in relationships. They don't. Some guys do. Some guys do. Yeah, blind guys. <laughs> you know, I imagine Stevie Wonder needs someone to dress him every day. I understand. You know, just, uh, it's a great place, but you got to be clear about what you're saying sometimes. Like, if you're going to say, I'm off to the gym, sort of uh, make it clear whether it's the G-Y-M or the G-Y-M. <laughs> <laughs> and if you say you're off to Dave and Buster's, it might be you're off to Dave and Bust one, but it just uh, it just be a little more clear. That's really the only thing you got to worry about. Edward on the Tom Likas show with our uh, screener, Dino. Hello. Hello, sweetheart. Looking <laughs> forward to having you here. Sweet little Dean in his tight blue jeans. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I have a question, sweetheart. Which section are you moving to? I'm uh, moving uh, north of uh, Santa Monica Boulevard. So North of? Yes. Uh, closer to Fountain. Oh, fantastic. We'll have you down. It'll be wonderful. We're all looking forward to giving you your first time, long time. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be amazing. This is Edward. I can't tell you how happy I am that you're spreading the love like this. Tell all We're your friends. We're spreading you, darling. <laughs> From a secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I think that you just don't really make our world a better place. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's never kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I down our telephone number. You're going to need it at 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. 
We could talk about anything we discussed on the air this week. We had quite a week this week. As you as you could hear by our montage at the beginning of this hour. Wow. Uh, we got a lot of mileage out of the Pope coming to the United States. And all the great souvenirs they're selling. Authorized merchandise. Have you gotten your Pope coffee mug yet? Or your Pope backpack? Or your papal visit golf shirt? Fantastic. We talked about the uh, the woman who I happen to think is insane. Who uh, signed a prenup and now believe she was stupid for doing it. So she's attempted to humiliate her husband by putting up a YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. We had the uh, the survey about unwed parenting. How divorce and out of wedlock births are costing $112 billion a year, according to a study. We talked about that. Uh, the young winos of L.A. came in here. We talked about wine, which was... Uh, Bit of a change of pace for us. We talked about the attempts to limit payday lenders in California, limiting the amount of interest they could charge, which I'm opposed to limiting how much interest they charge. If stupid people want to take out stupid loans that stupidly multiply, companies are owned by geniuses, and I don't mean that facetiously. Those people are, are brilliant You know, God bless America. Nobody forces them to go in there and borrow money. Don't be a dork. If you're a complete loser and a deadbeat and you expect to have access to money, expect to pay very high interest. If you don't want to pay very high interest, stop being a deadbeat. I don't know how complicated that is for some people, but apparently it is. Uh, as you heard in the montage, we also talked about uh, Dean's upcoming uh, move to West Hollywood, a largely gay community here in Southern California. Dean will be celebrating diversity nightly beginning about 11 o'clock. And attempts to charge a 30 cent a can or bottle beer tax here in California. Uh, yeah, it's for the children. Sure. We can talk about any of those things if you like. Uh, we can also talk about anything we did not discuss. One thing that has happened since I last spoke to you is uh, Isaiah Thomas was finally mercifully fired as the coach of the New York Knicks. And I think it's time to concede right now that the New York Knickerbockers are irrelevant. They are an embarrassment to the National Basketball Association. That they get an inordinate amount of coverage on television because ESPN is obsessed with the cities of New York and Boston. And so there is constant speculation about what will happen with the New York Knickerbockers. You know, there's a lot of other bad teams in the NBA, and they don't spend very much time talking about them. You know, the Miami Heat was particularly bad this season. I don't see ESPN obsessed with whether Pat Riley's going to be coaching next year. And in fact, their only interest in, in Pat Riley is that he once coached the New York Knicks. And ESPN just obsessed with Boston and New York. That's all they care about. And the New York Knicks don't deserve this attention. They just don't. And uh, I'm just amazed at the number of morons out there who uh, who talk about the New York Knicks like they're somehow important. Just let me remind all you New York Knicks fans out there, those of you who remain, the last time, do you know about this, Art? The last time the New York Knickerbockers won a championship, who was their sixth man? Well, he's a name you know. Patrick Ewing? No, they, have, they didn't win when Patrick Ewing was there. Come on! Come, the Knicks haven't won the championship, Art, since before you were born. Well, that's what I'm saying. Patrick Ewing wasn't playing with the Knicks way back then. No. Yeah, put it this way. You know how you know how teams always have to have that sixth man who's a white guy? You know, like uh, the, the Lakers currently have uh, Luke Walton, and they once had Kurt Rambis. 
Uh, this was the uh, sixth man white guy on the New York Knickerbockers. Who was that? No, no. Yeah, his name was Phil Jackson. That's how long it's been since the New York Knickerbockers won a championship. <laughs> how old is your dad? Fifty-one. So do you know how old he was when that when I have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, your dad was uh, 17. That's the last time the New York Knickerbockers won a championship. Think about that. Now, in view of that, don't you think it's time that ESPN just stopped talking about them? Just, just come on, ramp it down. Who cares? Who cares who the president of the Knicks is? Who cares who the coach of the Knicks is? Who cares who the next moron who coaches the Knicks is going to be? Who cares? They stink. End of story. Move on. <laughs> the NBA's got plenty of lousy teams you can be wasting your time talking about. Just look at most of the Eastern Conference. Hell, the Eastern Conference of the NBA only has five teams over 500. The rest of them are 500 and below. Go up and down that Eastern Conference. You want to talk about bad teams all day? Go ahead. Teams that haven't been good in decades. There's plenty of them in there. When's the last time the Philadelphia 76ers won anything? I think Dr. J was playing there. Talk about them. It's only 90 miles from New York. You'll feel comfortable with that. But stop it with the Knickerbockers already. Stop it. And all you morons out there who move to Los Angeles or any city where our show is on from New York City, don't even don't even call in about the Knickerbockers. I'm warning you. I'm telling you right now, don't even call in because if you do, you see you're screwing with the wrong guy. I I grew up in New York. I was a kid when the Knickerbockers won their two championships. And I will kick your ass. My recommendation to you is you just shut up about the New York Knicks. Shut up. And don't get me started about the New York Yankees, who held their last world championship party at Windows on the World, okay? Don't even get me started on them. You Yankees are the best team of all time. In what century? Oh, those New Yorkers just piss me off. Piss me off. So we can talk about anything we did not get into this week. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. And by the way, we have an international line. A few weeks ago, we had a lot of calls from other countries. A lot of people listen to our show on the Internet in every time zone you can imagine. If you're calling from another country, uh, write our number down. It's simple. And we have this line open, and you'll get right through. The country code is 1. The area code is 323. And the telephone number is 520-6211. I'll give you that whole package again. It's 1-323-520-6211. All right, we're off to the races on this Friday, baby. Tom, Tom Lycan. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Hey, doing the Lord's work, Father. Keep it up. It's the Tom Lycan Show. It's the Tom Lycan Show. At one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Thank you for tuning in. Here's Ram on the Tom Lager Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, I want to see what you think about the proposals of the new football stadium out in the city of industry, Los Angeles area. Have you heard about that? Oh, I've heard about it. Uh, Ed Roski. Yeah, Ed Roski. Who is the uh, person who is promoting uh, this uh 
uh, proposed football stadium that would be in the city of industry at the intersection of, I believe, the 57 and the 60 freeways. Correct. Uh, well, he is the partner to Philip Anschutz, who owns Stable Center and the L.A. Kings and a portion of the Lakers. Mm-hmm. And uh, they also own a bunch of soccer teams like the Galaxy, and uh, uh, they uh, also own that O2 Arena in London. Right. Uh, but um, I, and, and by the way, I don't know if uh, Mr. Anschutz is involved uh, in uh, the football stadium proposal. I did not see his name anywhere near it, but I, I certainly saw Ed Roski there. And, uh, you know, let's face it, if if a private entity is willing to spend the money to build a football stadium, I will be their biggest supporter. <laughs> I will be their biggest supporter. Here's what I don't support. Uh, The idea of any public funds uh, being spent on a stadium other than to provide freeway exits or things like that. Right. uh, It should be a private uh, venture, and that's it. Uh, AEG, the company owned by Philip Anschutz, uh, originally proposed to build a stadium uh, in the South Park area, which is on the other side of the 110 freeway from Staples Center. And Mark Ridley Thomas, uh, who has a suicide wish for the city of Los Angeles, uh, killed uh, that idea in, uh, by all appearances because uh, he was obsessed with having the Coliseum here in Los Angeles be the one and only choice for the National Football League. And it is a primary reason we haven't had football here for 12 years, almost right. 13. So um, you know, hopefully Mark Ridley Thomas can butt out this time. He's a city councilman in the city of Los Angeles. Hopefully he will butt out and let Ed Roski do his work. And uh, he's got a plan for a stadium. He's got, uh, I'm sure he's got financing arranged during the process of being arranged. And he needs to get a commitment from an existing NFL team to move to Los Angeles. Uh, it sounds like a lot of thought has gone into it. And... Uh, if he can pull it off uh, without asking the taxpayers to kick in, I, I'm all over it. I'm a big fan. I, I heard uh, in an interview he, he conducted a couple of days ago, he said that the, the stadium itself would be constructed at no taxpayer's expense. So it really seems like it's possible. Well, there was another story I read in the paper at the same time that uh, the city of industry was trying to do something with sales taxes, uh, to divert sales taxes for another purpose. It didn't say what the purpose was. It was suspected it might be having to do with the infrastructure of a football stadium. Uh, so we don't really know that for sure. If that right. is if that is the case, by the way, they all try to get public money first, including uh, when they build Stable Center. They tried to get the city of L.A. to put money in there. Uh, the city of L.A., uh, thank God, resisted. Uh, of course, it's... 1150 for a Tecate at Staples Center, but I'd much rather the people who attend events at Staples Center pay for Staples Center uh, than the taxpayers. Right. So I, I go to Staples Center all the time. I, I have season tickets for the Kings. I go to see the Lakers. I go to see heavyweight fights at Staples Center. I go to see concerts at Staples Center. And I would much rather pay 1150 for a Tecate uh, than to have my property taxes going up or the sales tax going up or right. income taxes in the state of California going up. Uh, it makes more sense for the people who use the facilities to pay for them. Definitely does. But uh, the proposal, as I've seen it, uh, you know, it, it looks fantastic. And let's face it, we're not talking about an area where you're going to have to use eminent domain to tear down people's homes or uh, displace people. This is right. empty land out near an intersection of two major freeways. I actually live uh, about five miles away, and, and, yeah, the land is perfect for that. It, it's wide open land. Uh, there's a university nearby. There's a community college nearby. But everything everything else, really, it's open land. It's, it's, it's a good spot. Well, Definitely. we know the area well because we've done many shows at Camacho's, which is right, right. down the road. Right. Which we'll be doing again on uh, Cinco de Mayo itself this year on a Monday. I'll be there. Uh, we'll be there, as we always are. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a great area. And here's the other thing. This is an area with a large Hispanic population uh, that was the population that supported, and many of them still support the Raiders. Right. I think it's a, just a great area to do this. I, I I think it's fantastic. Great. Good to hear. All right, Tom, can you take me out to old, old school, please? I certainly can.
It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Cliff. Cliff is listening to our online stream in Seattle. On the Tom Like is show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Cliff. Uh, I just had some questions about financial investments and stuff. All right, I'm here for you. All right, well, uh, I just turned 18 about a month ago, as of yesterday, actually. And uh, I was wondering how I could start building my credit. The best way to build your credit, number one, is uh, if you have any bills, pay them on time. Okay. Always. And that includes anything, including your car insurance. Okay. Things that don't look obviously attached to your credit. Everybody assumes that uh, building your credit means getting a credit card and, and, and making minimum payments every month. But they're looking at other things now, like paying your rent on time. Mm -hmm. or paying for your uh, insurance on time. All right. Well, right you're, now I only have one bill that I pay for automatically, so and that's the cable bill, and that's about fifty bucks a month. So right. But do you have like electricity? Um, I still live with my parents because I'm still in high school for another about two months. Then All after right. that, then um, I'll have a couple more bills to pay off. But other than that, uh, right now it's just the cable bill. All right. Well, having the cable bill, do you have a bank account? I do. I have two savings accounts and a checking account. And what's the total balance of all three? Um, combined, it's about 1200 bucks right now. Well, you might go to the bank and apply for a uh, credit card with a small credit line. Right. And if they won't give that to you, apply for a what they call a secured card, which means it's secured against, say, $500 of your cashola. Okay. So in other words, uh, you never really have any credit per se. You're borrowing the money from yourself and you're paying interest to the bank. But uh, my recommendation to you is if you do that, don't borrow so much on a credit card that you end up paying interest. Always pay the bills on time. Always pay them in full. Yeah, my parents got into some really bad issues with that, especially my mom. She uh, yeah. ran up about I think, ten grand in credit card bills and just got it paid off uh, a couple of years ago, and that destroyed her credit. But uh so I definitely know the downside of credit cards and loans and stuff like that. Right. That's how I learned, too. My parents were exactly the same. Yeah. And um, also I was thinking about, like, some good starter investments. What would you, like, recommend me start out with? Well, uh, the first thing I would recommend to you is that you start an individual retirement account. Okay. Uh, and in your case, a Roth IRA. There's two different kinds of IRAs, and the one you want is a Roth IRA. This is one where you take money that's already been taxed, uh -huh. like your paycheck or whatever, and you deposit that into the uh, Roth IRA, and you can put up to, uh, I believe it's uh, 4000 a year right now. Okay. 5000 if you're over 50, which you're not. Mm. And, um, and, and, and what happens with that is uh, you can't deduct that from your income taxes today, but in, you know, 45 or 50 years when you retire, mm -hmm. chances are you'll be a millionaire. Yeah, there's a guy from Edward Jones Investments that came into my one of my financial advising classes, and he showed a uh, breakdown starting with paying like 50 bucks a month and then going up by 10% per year. And then at the end of, uh, I think, about 40 years of investing, it was four and a half or five or so million dollars. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. And so I uh, highly recommended. Uh, and when you uh, get into one of these funds... Now, when you start a uh, an, a, a Roth IRA, mm -hmm. there are mutual funds, and you can talk to the companies I, I like, and uh, they don't advertise here, and I have no connection to them other than that I have money invested there, uh, Fidelity Investments and Vanguard. Uh, they've got funds that are called target date funds or life life funds. or uh, Target date retirement is, is generally what, what they call them. Okay. And what they do is you figure it out the approximate date within five years that you're going to retire. So in your case, it, if we're assuming you'd retire at 65, that would be about 50 or 55 years from today. Okay. So that would mean if they had a target date account for, let's say, 2063 or 2065, it wouldn't be 2063, 2065 or 2060. Okay. Yeah. What happens is they do all of the balancing for you. Uh, between bonds and stocks, when you are putting money in in the early years, uh, almost 100% of the money is invested in stocks. And as you get older, they take some of it out of stocks and redeploy it into bonds.
Okay. And they keep increasing the mix as time goes on. Some of these funds are spectacular. I know Vanguard has some good ones. I know T. Rowe Price has some good ones. And you can buy, by the way, you can buy these funds, even if they're not Fidelity or Vanguard, you can frequently buy them through Fidelity and Vanguard because they sell the funds of other companies as well. Okay. So that's a good start for you. All right. And um, what about, like, uh, I'm saving up to buy a car, so, like, what would you suggest I start saving toward? Well, um, it would depend on uh, what kind of car you're looking for. Uh, when you look at gasoline prices being over $4 a gallon, yeah, I think you want to get yourself a car that has really good gas mileage and has really low maintenance. Yeah, I was looking at some uh, cheap used cars that I could get to start off with, and uh, they're getting pretty good gas mileage. The, I well, was looking at like Chevy Cavaliers and small cars like that. that well, you know what I would recommend to you? Uh, Say a one-year-old or a two-year-old Toyota. Okay. Um, I wouldn't recommend a used hybrid, mm -hmm. but like a used Corolla or a used Honda Civic, but like one year or two years old. Mm -hmm. Because many cars lose 20 25% of their value the day you drive them off the lot, mm -hmm. which means you can get a really good deal on a relatively new car, and many of the car dealers... Uh, they refurbish these cars. They put them through a, a, a an inspection of like a hundred point inspection or something, and they will have extended warranties. Okay. So if you check with a Toyota dealer, a Honda dealer, um, a Nissan dealer, mm -hmm. uh, th uh, you see what they have in the way of year old or two year old uh, trade ins. All right. I was thinking about those, and the main thing that I don't like about them is that in Washington they're one of the top stolen cars on the list so well the, the reason is because so many people own them yeah I mean remember the number one selling car is going to be the number one stolen car as well yeah and um, I mean think about it do you want to have a car that nobody wants to steal exactly that's pretty much describing it's my like guess. that line I use on the air nobody wants to eat an empty restaurant yeah exactly that pretty much describes my dad's truck to a T. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah. Stay away from trucks, SUVs, vans, all that stuff. All right. Uh, do not do not buy those unless you want to spend uh, four twenty five, four fifty a gallon, mm -hmm. and be refilling all the time. Yeah. All right. And um, I was wondering what you would recommend for savings. Like, what would be a good target for saving at this age? Are you talking about how much to save or where to save it? Um, both, actually. Well, uh, banks are paying the lowest interest rates around. Okay. Uh, unless you buy, like, a CD, you know, a certificate of deposit. Mm -hmm. If you look at the newspaper uh, here in L.A., and I imagine in um, Seattle as well, about once a week they have a, a chart that shows various uh, interest rates. You can go to a website called bankrate.com. Mm -hmm. And it will show the interest rates of, you know, regular savings accounts, CDs. Right now, because the Federal Reserve cut interest rates, which you may have read in the news, uh -huh. that specifically means that's the rates paid on, on like, checking accounts, savings accounts, uh, the kind that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So it brings down the uh, rate on CDs and what have you. All right. But, um, you know, it's a good idea to have money put away for a rainy day. In case you lose a job and during a recession, that's entirely likely. Mm -hmm. You lose a job, you're out of work for a while, you're going to need money to pay the rent, take care of your health, mm -hmm. eat. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a big thing here. Right. So you're trading the security you have of the money being insured by the FDIC. Mm -hmm. Federal government insures the, the savings in banks uh, for uh, some yield. Mm -hmm. But I, I recommend you have a certain amount uh, saved up. In the bed, by the way, uh, Vanguard and uh, Vanguard has one of the highest paying money market accounts there is. Now, that is not insured by the FDIC, uh, but Vanguard itself has never, ever allowed a, um, um, a money market fund to go broke, ever. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Vanguard has, if you check it, they're one of the highest paying money market accounts there is. All right. And they have one called Prime Portfolio, which is really good. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, and I'm definitely going to use this, and I've been listening to you for uh, 
about six years now since I was 12. My dad turned me on to you when uh, I was on a ride along with him in the middle of the night and had nothing better to listen to because you were cut off and put on at some ungodly hour that I can't stand to listen to. So now I just listen to you online. I love it. Yep. And uh, I was wondering if you'd take me out with a bong hit for Dean and uh, old, old school. I certainly can, Cliff. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I've been with my girlfriend for three years. I have never once been to a chick flick with her. I have never once told her person in public. Okay, I have my ball. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yes. The Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones. Let's say hello here to Anthony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello. My friend Timbo loves your show, and I just started listening to you about two months ago for the first time. Sounds good to me. And I wanted to talk about two very controversial things that are going to be very entertaining. One of them is condoms, and one of them is young girls. I listen to your show, and I think you're great about a lot of things, especially the hating women thing, because they deserve it. But the most important things about condoms and young girls are don't tell these guys to use condoms. There's no reason to use condoms. Women invented condoms. There is, there is a reason to use condoms. I, I don't want to hear about diseases and all that crap. I'm not talking about diseases. Right. I'm not even talking about disease. I'm talking about birth control. Nah, any guy that knows how to have sex the right way knows he can take it out. You no, know that you can't. That's, that's, that's completely ignorant. It's just not true. You know that it's true. Oh, it is not true. That. It is not I true. No, I, yeah, forget it. You're an idiot. You're trying to jerk my chain. I've been doing this a long time, son. Call another show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Manolo on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Father. Manolo. How are you? Doing okay, son. Oh, thank you for getting that idiot off the radio about condoms. What a, what an idiot. Of course. Oh, thank you. Uh, had a call and talked to you about the country girl yesterday, your caller. The idiot that was claiming San Francisco was a country. Oh, New York, too, and Texas. Yeah, it's amazing, Tom. She tried bashing you, brother. It, it was horrible. I mean, <laughs> come on, ladies, if you're going to call... Be on top of your game. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Women, I know. Come on. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Another thing, Tom. Uh, stadium talks for City of Industry. I think it's wonderful. We need it. I think City of Industry is a perfect place to put a stadium. I think it's fantastic. I live five miles from there, Tom. I live in Claremont. And that's what we need. I mean, the metro goes right through there. I could already see it happening. Everyone takes the train. You know, go, uh, Metro drops you off right there, in and out, bang, bang, brand new stadium. I mean, I travel far to go to new stadiums, and new new stadiums are awesome. So that's what we need. Well, as I say, as, as long as Ed Roski uh, means it when he says that no public funds will be used, I'm a supporter. And Roski's a money man. I was reading in the Times today. He is a money man. Oh, yeah. And, and if he's willing to use... You know, whatever money he's got, to, you know, for it, and you know he's got partners, and he's not willing to use taxpayers' money. I'm all for it. Yeah. And, and 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 I'm Latino myself, and we're we're gonna be there. And that's not even the teams that they're proposing aren't even close to. I'm a Green Bay Packer fan, and I hate the Chargers, but I would go because Green Bay would be coming out here if you know stuff like that. I know people would go. Oh, uh, there's no doubt people would go, and it, it would all depend, though, on whether the team uh, was ever a winner. In the beginning, people would go, but as we saw with the Raiders, after the Raiders stunk for enough years, they were drawing 30,000, 35,000 at the Coliseum, not 70,000. Yeah. 
And we can leave all the Raider fans in Oakland. We don't we don't like them anyways. Now, the bottom line here is I think L.A. – people love to say L.A. sports fans are, are stupid or they don't know sports. I think L.A. sports fans are the smartest consumers on earth. When the product stinks, people stop going, and that's that. True. And I think uh, there's nothing stupid about that. Another question for you, Tom. Yeah. What do you think about guys that bang chicks with kids? I think they're crazy. I know. I'm trying to talk my cousin out of it. He's banging some chick with a kid, and he's sprung. They're going to have another kid pretty soon. What do you, what, what do you have to say to Ron? I'll bet he's riding bareback, too. What do you think? Talk to him, buddy. Cal, give him is he, ri- is he riding bareback? Tell me. I don't know. I I know he's he's a Rodriguez. I bet you he is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's listening right now. I yeah. bet you he is. Yeah. Well, that girl is going to have his baby. And then he's gonna be he's gonna be paying for that baby for the next twenty one plus years. Talk to him, father. And so, uh, believe me, there's already one sucker out there who's paying money to her, and he's gonna be next. And that's where it's going. And I don't care how hot she is, how great it is in bed. That's what the recycle bin is for. Take a look at the recycle bin. There are plenty of chicks who used to be hot, who used to do whatever guys wanted, and then they got dumped into the recycle bin. By the way, why was she put in the recycle bin? Yeah. I, you know I what they say? Of... You know, every hot chick out there, there's some guy who's sick to death of effing her. DTB. Right. That's what he needs to do. D-T-B. That's right. D-T-B. That's right. Father, can you take me out George Bush style, chase it up with a gunshot to his freaking head? George Bush style? What would that be? Anything George Bush. I just want a bullet in his head. <sighs> I don't know if we have that. I don't know. Well, there's your bullet. All right. Secret Service on line two, Art, by the way. I'm kidding. <laughs> He's taking me seriously. How would I know if the Secret Service was on line two? Do we have that doctor quote? The doctor quote? Oh, yeah, we ha- we used to have that. That's right. Doc. The doctors or the docs who don't get a chance to practice their love or whatever. What? <laughs> we, we've got Bush. Wow. We've got Bush. No, that's not it. It's in there somewhere. Bush was giving a speech about uh, gynecologists. It's great. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Paul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Oh, Tom, first-time caller, long-time listener. I've heard many, many funny things on this radio program, but by far... What made me have to stop is what you told that little 10-year-old kid the other day. That was yesterday, yeah. Oh, my goodness, dude. I just keep imagining that guy when his wife or his girlfriend or his quote-unquote friend comes back, like the argument they're going to have that you that he allowed his son to call of all shows yours. And also, I was wondering, how brainwashed is that kid to be so anti-man but so pro-woman? Did well? Did you hear the guy laughing out loud? Oh, that guy had to be laughing when did I he... when I said that he and the, the mom were having sex. He laughed out loud. Oh my god! You know, if they were having sex, they're not anymore because that would probably piss off. This is my world. mommy's friend. <laughs> they're not <laughs> having sex. I've been in there. I've been in that bedroom. Meanwhile, there's ball gags in their closet. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, keep up the good work, Tom. I just had to tell you, man, that was funny. And any time a kid calls up, dude, please, just give it to them straight. Let them learn early, you know? They they need it. Yeah, can you take me out with the bong hit? I certainly can. Can we all just get a bong? 1-800-5800-TOM. Luis of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. You know what? I have an issue, and I don't know if it's just me. I'm being compulsive about certain things. I don't know if it's that. I want you to clarify. I want some insight. You know, I want you to help me out on, on an issue I've been having since, actually, I was, like, 13 years old. Um, I was riding a bus, and somebody told me that I had to get up for a senior citizen because it happened to be old. <laughs> And why? And I didn't understand why, and I was upset. I was a kid, you know, making faces, you know, clasping my arms, being bratty about it. I did. I got up for the person, but I did not understand in my mind why I had to get up for that person, and I still don't. So today I was in the store, and I was buying liquor, um, and the manager was completely, I don't know. If- I wish we had more time. The Tom Likas Show.